This video will help you understand how to review and refine 3D building forms extracted from your LiDAR data. Now we've run the Calculate Building Roof Form step, and we've created our 3D buildings using the knowledge the tool has derived. But as with any feature extraction method, there is a level error that we can expect to see in our automated output. So now we need to review this output and refine the results as necessary to meet our requirements. The first step in doing this is to calculate some confidence metrics that can help us identify where these errors are and the magnitude and potential causes of these errors. So to do this, we're going to go to the Review Building Roof Forms task. We're going to add our buildings with roof form attributes and as well as our digital surface model raster. And we're going to hit Run. And this is going to calculate metrics that are going to help us determine the confidence of our classification. We can go to the attribute table here, open that up. And here you see we have a new field titled RMSE, or root mean square error. And this gives us the average difference between the height stored in the pixel of the DSM within a building footprint compared to the corresponding height at that pixel's location on the 3D building we've generated. Then the next step applies a symbology layer to help us visualize this information. So you add your building footprints to this step. And then you navigate to your layer files and select the LOD2 RMSE classification layer file and then hit run. And you'll see now we have in map view our buildings classified by RMSE. And we can link this view to our scene view with the last data set turned on so we can see the corresponding 3D output for the buildings as we review in map view. Now when we find issues in the data as we review, we can update the roof form attributes and building geometries as necessary to resolve these issues. In this example, we have a gable roof where the eave height is set lower than the true eave, as we can see in the LiDAR. To fix this, we can zoom in on the LiDAR points and identify a point that represents the true eave elevation. Note the, the elevation of this point, in this case, seven, around 703 feet. And then subtract from that value the base elevation of the building feature, in this case, 685 feet, giving us a 18-foot true eave height. Then we can go to the Modify Roof Form Attributes task step. Select the building you want to edit. And then hit the next step. Then simply add in the new eave height into the eave height field. Hit enter, and you'll see that the building will update on the fly. Hit finish, and then rotate around in 3D view to see the updates that you've made. In this next example, you'll notice that the roof form of this building is generated as a mansard style roof. While you can see in the LiDAR that the roof more resembles a hip roof type. You can fix this in the same way that we fixed the last issue by going to the Modify Roof Form Attributes task step, selecting the building, hitting Next, and then using the drop down in the Roof Form field to navigate to HIP. Then hit Enter, and you'll see that the roof changes instantly to a HIP style roof. Now you can rotate around it in 3D view, comparing it to the LiDAR, and you can see it much more closely resembles the output of the LiDAR. Here's another example of a building where the roof type is incorrect. Here it's classified as a shed, while the LiDAR clearly shows it being a gable type roof. You can change this in the same way we changed the last example. Select the building, hit next step in the modify roof form attributes task, and then change the roof form to gable. But here we see that that's not quite enough, as the gable's ridge is going in the wrong direction. To fix this, go to the Roof Direction Adjust field and change the 0 to a 1. This changes which edge of the polygon the rule uses as its starting point, thus changing the direction that the ridge generates. In this example, you see a roof that is correctly classified as flat and whose height matches the height of the main portion of the building, but is off because of this vertical break 
uh, and this lower portion of the roof structure here. So we can go to this roof segmentation task, select our building, and split along that vertical break there to form two features uh, that, this, that represent this building. Then we can go in, turn off our building, navigate to the roof points of this area, check out the elevation, see it's 698 feet, uh, and then subtract from that the base elevation of this building, which is 682 feet, giving us a 16-foot roof. And then we can go back to our Modify Roof Form Attributes task, select the new feature that we've created, and just go ahead and update that building height field from 52 down to 16. And then hit Apply, and you can see that new portion of the building accurately represented. Here we have another incorrectly classified roof type. But the correct roof type, in this case, is actually two different types within one footprint. If we go to Map View, we can increase the transparency of the DSM to show the imagery underneath. We can see that this is a cross gable roof with a flat section in the back. Now we can go to our segmentation task step, select this building, split features, and split right along the break where the two different roof types change. You can see this change update in 3D view. And then we can finish that step, go back to our modify roof attributes step, select our new feature, change that roof type to flat. This will generate automatically down to that, uh, that eave height that we had before. So that is correct. No need to change the height. And then we can select that old feature and change that to gable. And we can see that that much more closely resembles the LiDAR. In this last example, we see a building output that is really quite close to reality. But looking closely, we see that the middle gable ridge is actually well below where it's being modeled here. But since this is a parametric model, we cannot change one section's ridge height without changing them all. So we'll have to segment this building. So we can go to our roof segmentation task step and split this building along into three rectangular building parts so we can model those roofs independently of one another. Now, once we're done with that, we can start editing the attributes of these features to align them with the LiDAR. First, we'll have to adjust the ridge direction of this building on the right here, as it got changed when we were, when we were updating. So select that, go to Modify Roof Form Attributes, and change that Roof Direction Adjust field to 1. You can see that aligning. Now we have to bring the ridge back down uh, to the elevation. So we've got a 726 foot elevation ridge. So subtract the 697 of the base elevation where I'm at, and we have a 29 foot ridge. So we update that in the roof attributes and see that being modeled down to that ridge. Now we can do the same for this middle section that is a good bit lower. We'll have to identify a point that's along that ridge. That looks like a good one. That's at 718 feet. Now we can recall that our base elevation for the building was 697 feet, and that gives us a ridge height of 21 feet. So we can add that into the building height field, hit finish, and see that line up with the LiDAR there. Now we have our separate building parts represented, but instead of resembling one complex roof form, they more resemble three different buildings with simple roofs. To merge these parts to form a more cohesive building feature, we can adjust the feature vertices to have them overlap, bringing the ridge line flush with the adjacent roof. To do this, we can go to our Modify Building Footprint Vertices step, 
select the building that we'd like to modify the vertices of. Click Edit Vertices. And then we can just drag the line on the edge of these, this feature out into the middle of the, the adjacent building. And we can do that for the other side. And once we are done with that and we hit Finish, we can see that the modified building, the ridge, goes flush up against those adjacent buildings. And once we're happy with the result, we can go on to save our edits. Just go to the Save Edits step and hit Finish. And that will save all the edits that you've made and you'll be ready to publish your buildings. Now after editing, we likely have many buildings that we've segmented into several roof polygons, but we want these output multi-patches to have only one feature per building. So we need to union some of these output features. To do that, we go to our Fuse Roof Form Segments task. Now the first step is going to automatically select all the features with duplicate building ID fields. These are the buildings that you've split during your review. But we might not want to union all of these. As you can see, some of the buildings I've split are in the downtown area where I actually want to have these as separate features. So what we can do here is deselect the features that we do want to fuse and then recalculate the unique ID for those that we want to keep separate. So once we have all the correct features selected, the next task will do just that. Put in our building roof form, run it, and that'll create those new unique IDs. Then we can run our Fuse Building Parts tool. To do that, you just add in our, your building layer and set an output, hit Run. And once that's complete, we can turn off our Symbols layer and see that we have a multi-patch feature layer with all the buildings in the downtown that we had selected as separate features. And then these other buildings with complex roofs are one single feature. And with that, we have our output building multi-patches. Now as a bonus, in Pro 1.4, we have the ability to directly edit our multi-patches in 3D. So if you have a building where you need a higher level of detail, you can select that feature, go to the Edit pane, and select Edit Vertices. Now we can cut out entryways, push or pull these faces in or out, cut out window features, and add other features like chimneys to our roofs. Just remember to save your edits once you're done. This video shows how you can create building models with your existing building footprint and LiDAR data using procedural modeling and feature extraction and how to refine those results using simple geometry and attribute editing. I hope you've enjoyed it.